Hey guys, Cliff Gray here with True Hunts and Flat Tops Wilderness Guides. Today I'm gonna go over footwear for sheep and goat hunts. And then I'll kind of throw in the super high alpine mule deer hunting too. You're gonna be in the same type of terrain, okay? So most of these hunts are gonna be backpack based. And the reality is even if they're not backpack based, you're gonna be moving around as if they were, in the sense that you're most likely, if you go in for a day hunt in sheep or goat country and you kill a goat, you're gonna be packing a super heavy load out in your backpack, all right? So for all intents and purposes, it's, it's all the same, okay? Let's just consider them backpack hunts, all right? And the footwear is gonna, gonna um, be based on that, okay? So first, socks, all right? The, I use a two, a two sock layering system, all right, on sheep and goat hunts and pretty much every other hunt nowadays except for late season hunts, all right? So sheep and goat hunts, I use a liner sock and then I use an outer merino wool sock. These are darn tough socks. Just bite the bullet, they're a $20 sock. I know it's embarrassing to buy $20 socks, but who gives a shit, just go with it. The advantage of, a, of these socks is they actually have a lifetime guarantee. So technically, if you wear them out, they're supposed to send you new socks. I've never tried it, but I've also never worn any out, which is saying something. I've put a lot of miles on, on these darn tough socks. And there's other you know, high quality Merino socks too that I'm sure are the same. But the advantages are they wick the moisture away from you. They provide just the right amount of warmth for me, at least, as an outer sock. And they don't smell, okay? So the last one is a pretty big one on a six or seven, 10 day sheep hunt, okay? Because I, Personally, in terms of this sock system, I might, on a seven day hunt, six, seven day hunt, I'm probably only gonna bring one, one outer sock, okay? Because of weight. And then I'm gonna bring three or four uh, inner silk liner socks, all right? And what that's gonna do for me is the Merino's gonna keep this sock from stinking really bad, but every couple days I can change into a dry, clean, liner sock, right? These silk liner socks. So part of that's psychological, just getting up in a backpack tent and that it's the day that I get to put on a nice clean silk liner sock, a dry silk liner sock. There's that component of it, just puts a smile on my face. But the other thing is the material that's against your skin, you're gonna be able to change it out more often. So there's not gonna be as much matting, you know, dirt, stuff like that, that in, turns into hot spots and turns into blisters. So that's the advantage of the two sock system, liner sock and then outer sock, okay? All right, if it happens to be like a late Alberta, uh, Alberta bighorn hunt, or maybe, you know, maybe a later mountain goat hunt, you can actually swap out the, um, the, the mid-weight merino darn tough sock for rag wool, wool sock, they're warmer. For most people, that's gonna be too much, okay? All right, and then, then uh, after your sock system, We'll move on to gators, okay? In the mountains, to me, gators are essential, all right? They do two things. One, they keep the moisture off the top of your boots, okay? And, and the, they keep the moisture from entering your boots. They keep the moisture off your pant leg. And even if you got waterproof boots, if your pant leg is wet, that moisture is gonna wick into your, into your boot, okay? So gators, gators solve that problem. The other thing they do is they keep your shoes tied. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the reality is if once you've got a cheaper goat in your pack or half of one, the guide's got the other half, and, and all of a sudden, you know, every 15 minutes you gotta tie your shoes because that's just what happens in the mountains if, you're, if your laces aren't covered up, if you're going through brush, willow, shit like that, okay? If you gotta keep doing that, you're gonna realize the pain of not having gators, all right? Gators keep your, your shoes tied, and that's, that is a legitimate uh, advantage of them, okay? Um, so moisture, keeping stuff uh, out, of your, out of the top of your boots and keeping your shoes tied. That's all an advantage of gators. Um, I, I, I like these Yukon uh, uh, Kuyu gators. Um, I prefer the Velcro. They're highly durable, and um, for how waterproof they are, they're, they're pretty darn quiet, okay? Some guys' gators that, that, you know, I'm guiding guys and they're wearing new gators from another company. I'm not saying that there's not other options, but a lot of the other companies, you can hear them and they, and they rub together and they're, they're pretty loud if they're waterproof. So just, just things to keep, keep in mind. All right, so now the most important part of this whole footwear thing for sheep, goat, sheep and goat kind of alpine hunts, all right? And that's it. You're going to have to pick a mountaineering boot. This is a, is a Hanwag Alaska GTX, my preference for boots, okay? Um, 
the, well, you, you're going to have to have a, uh, a mountaineering boot on almost all sheep and goat hunts, okay? The, the other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the things worn in, and you're going to have to pick what works for best for you, okay? All right, so the other thing, the other thing that's going to happen, even though these boots are waterproof on your sheep and goat hunt, and you're wearing your gaiter, your feet are probably going to get wet, okay? There, you know, you might cross a stream, get submerged and stuff like that. But the other thing is that you're going to be traveling a lot and your feet are going to put out uh, sweat and that's going to end up as moisture in your feet. So one of the key things, I don't care how deep of a backpack hunt it is or whatever, you need a camp shoe, all right? Um, I found that the best camp shoe is a croc or, a, you know, a croc equivalent. The thing about them is they stay clean and they, uh, they're lightweight, they're durable, and the thing is when you put your foot in here, they're, they, they're ventilated. So you can get your wet socks off, get your wet boots off, and get your feet dry before you lay down and sleep at night. One of the, one of the key issues of guys getting, getting their feet messed up on sheep and goat hunts is they've spent the time to get their boots worn in and they have no history of hot spots or uh, blisters in those boots. But what happens is they, they keep their feet moist for days on end. And that changes the dynamic of your foot. It makes you much more prone to hot spots and blisters, okay? So make sure you bring a pair of camp shoes. Sandals will work too, I'm, but I'm a Croc fan, man. All right, so now that's the standard stuff. I get a lot of questions on this, on this kind of more aggressive gear, okay? What I'll say about crampons, micro spikes, stuff like that, is 99% of sheep and goat hunts, you don't need them. Maybe not 99%, but let's say 90, 95%, okay? And one thing for you to consider when you're looking at these is that you might view them as an asset, but they can very quickly become a liability, okay? So I'm just gonna lay it out there. Probably the hunts that are most likely, uh, you're gonna, you wanna bring a pair of these, are like northern BC coastal coastal goat hunts, late season goat hunts in BC, those sort of hunts. Um, there's a few places in Colorado. If you know, if I'm going through snowshoots, I might I might bring a pair. Okay, but outside of that, don't even worry about it. They kind of people have people seem to have some interest, and I think it's honestly because because you look at these Kuyu photo shoots and the guys are wearing crampons and using ice axes. Uh, and uh, it, I think a lot of that is, is just kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, just, just pumping up the adventure. All right. But I'll go over them real quick. If you do, if you are going to do one of those goat hunts that requires them. Okay. The safest one for somebody who's not trained in, 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 you know, self-arresting with the ice axe, stuff like that is just a micro spike. These are awesome. Okay. And you can actually use these on a lot of hunts. They don't, you don't have to have snow. You don't have to have ice. It could just be slick. They give your boot a little extra traction. They'll go on any boot, it's just an elastic and they have little bitty spikes. Okay. So they give you some more traction. Nice. And they're lightweight. Okay. So those are micro spikes by, I use the ones from Cata, I think it's Catahoula. Um, okay. And then kind of between true mountaineering crampons, and micro spikes, there's this type of crampon, okay? Like, you're talking like an inch, inch teeth, okay? These would probably suffice, all right? And the advantage of these is if you're not trained in using crampons, they're, they're a little bit safer than a full-on crampon, okay? So this might be the, your choice. And the other thing about them is you can put them on like these, these Hanwag boots, they're not technically not crampon compatible, right? A true crampon compatible boot's gonna have a ridge here on the back, and then some will actually have them on the toe too, okay? This, this type of crampon, kind of this low level crampon, will work on a boot like that because it's got this type of, of binding, okay? This is a this is all, you know, it's all a soft binding. All right, so those will work, okay? Now, this type of crampon, a true mountaineering crampon. I mean, if maybe on like a, a late season goat hunt in British Columbia, there, you know, your guides might recommend these and that, that's perfectly reasonable. They're, they're a huge help. If you haven't used crampons, it's amazing what you can do with them. But what I'll say about them is, like I said, that an asset can become a liability really fucking quick, okay? So if you don't, you need, if you're gonna go on a hunt that needs these, 
go out and get some training with an ice axe, know how to self-arrest, know the dangers of falling and then sticking a crampon boot down in, down in the snow, okay? Because you can easily stick these in and they're gonna stop you, but they might rotate your legs, you know, 889 degrees while you're doing that and, and turn it into 12 or, 12 or 13 pieces. So just keep that in mind, okay? I, I would recommend really, if you need something, you know, just for a little extra to carry in your pack, these micro spikes will, will get it done, okay? So that's kind of my overview on the high alpine sheep and goat footwear. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks guys.